And I was more of an underdog, the guy who wasn't the smartest, wasn't the biggest, wasn't the strongest, wasn't the fastest, was the skinniest. <laughs> That's why they call me Skinny Rick. One of the things I used to do was I would ride my bike down and to the basketball courts. This guy was on the court, and he goes, is your sister Rhonda? And I was like, yeah. And he was like, that's my sister. I'm like, what the heck you talking about? And so I'm going to go tell my dad, and my dad's going to come back, and he's going to let this guy know, you know, don't play games like that with me. And when I went home, my dad, I could tell he wanted to tell me something, but he didn't want to be the one to say it. He was like, let's just wait till your mom comes home, and then we'll discuss it and talk about it. And I'm like, I found out that I was adopted because my mom couldn't have children and that they didn't really want to tell me. My mom came home, she started crying. Haven't we raised you, you know, good, you know, haven't we been good or whatever? And I'm like, yeah, no, I love you, but I just want to know the truth, though. I just felt like everything that I had known up to that point was a lie. You know, I just felt like I had to do something to feel better, to feel wanted, to feel like needed. It put a chip on my shoulder. That's what it did. I'm gonna prove to everybody that I belong. It was very, very hard being around people and feeling different. Here's my family. They had good hair, I had bad hair. They had good skin, I had bad skin. They looked better than me, I felt like. And I felt like because of that, I didn't belong. I had to prove myself. Skinny Rick developed into a high school football giant in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, starring at running back, receiver, and return man. I was the number one recruit, but it was because of I could do all these different things. I wanted to play running back. When Coach Holtz came from Notre Dame, he said, you can start for us at running back now. So I was like, oh, wow. Here's a guy who wanted to be wanted, right? And wanted people to appreciate me. After Ricky Waters arrived at Notre Dame, Coach Lou Holtz changed his tune. There wasn't that much difference between Ricky Waters and a Mark Green and Tony Brooks at running back. But a wide receiver, there was a big drop off. So we were a better football team when Ricky Waters was as a wide receiver. Waters also returned kicks. Holt saw his elusiveness as an asset, but not when it happened off the field. I never had a problem with him academically, drugs, alcohol. I had a problem with him keeping time or being on time. I remember vividly saying, if you're late one more time, your fault, my fault, bus driver's fault, heart attack, I don't care. If you're late one more time, he ain't playing. In Waters' sophomore year, Notre Dame was 10-0 and ranked number one in the country, entering the regular season finale at number two ranked USC. But at the dinner the night before the game, Waters and teammate Tony Brooks were late, and Holtz made good on his threat. The part that, that was pretty frustrating to me was that we actually got there in time. We didn't go by Eastern Standard Time. We went by LLH time. Lois Leo Holtz, and what was on my watch was really critical, and everybody was five minutes early. And I just couldn't believe when he, he came to our back to the room, when he was like, man, we're, you know, I'm gonna just send you guys home. We took him out and put him on the airplane. That was a mistake. Should have put him on the bus. They had four hours, they should have had four days to think about their trip back home. Notre Dame would go on to win the game and the national championship. You know, a little, little sour taste. It wasn't super sweet. I wanted to quit. Waters came back for his junior season, and Holtz gave him a chance at running back. But he wasn't sold on keeping him there. It was obvious he's a very talented individual. But his problem with running back in college was this. He wanted to score on every play. When you try to impress the world, Every time you had the ball, you aren't going to get the maximum. And that's not what great running backs do. And he's like, I just don't understand why you can't see. At wide receiver, you could be special. But at running back, you're average at best. 
average at best. I, I might have said it to him, I don't recall, but if I did, it'd be an average running back when you're running the way you are. Not only is that a hurtful thing to say to me, but that also is something that will drive me because I'm not gonna let you be right. Waters finished his college career averaging more than five and a half yards per carry. In the NFL draft, he fell to San Francisco in the second round, then missed his entire rookie season with injuries. They start saying, you break easy. Then they start calling me glass man. Then it turned into, forget him, we're going in another direction. But I wasn't gonna let that happen. I was not gonna be denied. In 1992, Waters won the 49ers starting running back job. He was mercurial and he was emotional and the emotion wasn't bottled up ever. I was just trying to make it. I just was trying to hype myself up. I'm young, I'm pretty, and can't possibly be beat. Ricky really wanted to just be great. I think the most important thing you could do is give him space. You talk about energy, that guy is the most energetic football player I've ever seen. We needed Ricky's talent. Open field running. Fourth and one. Catching the ball. Ricky Waters, he brings a, a missing element. The more he's played, the more confident he's gotten. And he has taken over and really been an asset. And his personality it wasn't a negative, it was a positive. And it was something that did create some flair and we probably could have used more of that. Turn it on. So you don't have respect for water until it comes and drowns you. It's gonna be a tidal wave today. Young with a handoff to Waters, he walks into the end zone. We'll just get his party started. And off the waters into the end zone. Second time today. Score from being over, baby. It's your baby. Yes. And off. Ricky Waters into the end zone. His third touchdown of the day. It ain't over yet. And off to water. Sweep to the left. Finds the hole. Tucked in. Reeks to the end zone. Touchdown 49ers. Four touchdowns for Ricky Waters. A playoff record for San Francisco. Waters five for the day. Five touchdowns by Ricky Waters. I mean, he was so up and so hyped for this day, Ricky Waters was ready. You can do it all, but I think you're best when you just run the ball. What do you think? Because you know what? You turn the power. You turn the power on. It's unbelievable. Just something to think about. I love you, man. You're sweet. All right, baby. You're in my huddle anytime, right? All right. <laughs> in 1994, the 49ers made it to the Super Bowl. In that game, he showed all the things he can do. Deep middle, Waters a great, over the shoulder catch, bounces away again, oh, what a bonanza! Quick pass, left flat, Ricky Waters makes the catch, he's in, touchdown 49ers! They give it to Ricky, cut back, left side, and the end zone! Touchdown 49ers, he beats Stanley Richard with a tremendous cut back move. I felt like the validation was finally there for Skinny Rick. I had proven myself, and I felt like it was time for me to get taken care of like these other guys who were on the team. The 49ers chose not to re-sign Waters. And I'm like, what are we doing? What are we thinking about? What, have we lost our mind? Just the idea that we could convince ourselves that it's okay to let Ricky go was one of the biggest mistakes we ever made. I just don't think he was appreciated. Maybe that's the problem that happened, is that he wasn't as appreciated as he should have been because of the personality that was so flamboyant. The personality covered a little bit of the talent. This bugged me a long time. It made my life pretty miserable without him. When he was gone, I was like, oh my gosh, he was great. Waters signed with his hometown team, Philadelphia. He is out of the shadows of all of those 49er superstars. He's in a place where he finally feels appreciated, where he can go out and be himself. In 1995, 
Ricky Waters debuted with the Eagles. My feeling was, this is a perfect fit. Kid from Harrisburg, demonstrated that he's a terrific player, tough, runs over people, a guy who plays big in big games. I mean, it's everything that you're looking for in Philadelphia. In week one, he faced the Bucks. Ricky played miserably. Late in the game, they're down 21 to six. There's an overthrown pass that Ricky just doesn't fully extend for, just lets it go. He saw Charles Dimery coming, and he stopped. And that has not endeared himself to the Eagle fans here. And after the game, he was asked about that. And his response, famously, was, what, reach for that ball? For who? For what? Well, first of all, I didn't want to talk because I, I would have liked to have seen the film first. But they were like, you're the captain. You got to speak. OK, I'll do it, but just give me some time because I was you know, trying to get my, my bearings on what just happened. I was in shock. They had to have another press conference like two days later where they brought Ricky out and he tried to kind of explain what he wasn't able to explain on Sunday. Would you even want me to go for a ball like that when I could be injured for the rest of the year? And even if I caught the ball, I, it would have taken a miracle for us to win that, that football game. It's just one game, we're gonna be okay. And he explained it better, but still not to the satisfaction of the fans. It was still like, a, oh boy, you sell out for every play. Doesn't matter if it's the first quarter or the fourth quarter, you're down three touchdowns. You play every play to the hill. I mean, he might be from Harrisburg, he might be from Pennsylvania, but he's not one of us. And they started, you know, questioning my manhood. And the... so here I am all over again trying to prove myself. I'm not little skinny Ricket anymore. And everyone's gonna see that I am who they thought I was, that I am a great player. Play the Waters, breaks one tackle, breaks two. Ricky Waters just runs through the tackle. By the end of that season, Ricky had 399 touches, a club record. The best back today was Ricky Waters, baby! You got it done. I'm not gonna argue with him. <laughs> He had 404 touches the next year and had over 1,800 combined yards, led the NFL. Ricky Waters proved that, that he was a warrior. In the three years he was here, you know, you look at that offense, it was him. He got off to a bad start, but nobody can deny that over three years he was one hell of a player. Ricky Waters is an amazing football player. After Philadelphia, Waters played four years in Seattle. He is one of only two players to run for 1,000 yards in a season for three different teams. He ended his career with over 10,000 rushing yards and nearly 15,000 yards from scrimmage. But the player who just wanted to be appreciated has yet to be embraced by the Hall of Fame. I think some of it is his persona. He was just a prickly kind of character. A terrific player in San Francisco, but wore out his welcome there. If you mention Ricky Waters to any Eagles fan, the first thing he's going to say, I guarantee you, the first thing he's going to say is, oh yeah, for who, for what? You know, it was one of those things that was still hurting me and I couldn't believe it, you know, took place the way it did and it went down like that and that people were thinking that way about me. I wanted it to go away. <laughs> when his career ended, he wrote his autobiography with the four words as its title. It wasn't even supposed to be a book. It was just me writing down my thoughts and just kind of like therapy. It still hurt. He began to heal when he shared his story with children who were given up for adoption, just like him. And they said, oh my God. I can't believe you were just like me. You were scared too, or you thought you was ugly too, or you know, all these things that they're going through. And for me to be able to show them some love is very fulfilling for me. 
The question now is, will the Hall of Fame ever show that love to the player formerly known as Skinny Rick? I have a feeling that he will enter the Hall of Fame conversation. He's got to. If you look at his career numbers, and one of the things that I always put a tremendous amount of value in is, how well did he play in big games? Ricky was one of those guys that the bigger the game, the better he played. In 1999, Ricky Waters married attorney, Katharina Chang. Later that same year, their first child was born premature. It was just the most horrible thing you can imagine when they said, you know, if you just want a little time with him because he's not going to make it. Here's my son, and he's dying, and we're holding him, and we're looking at him, and we're kissing him and everything, and he's like, <gasps> and just, <sighs> and to hold him until he took his last breath, that right there changed something mm -hmm. in me, and in I know yeah, in her definitely. too. And I think that that, as bad as it was, made me a better father when I became a father, which happened <laughs> just a year later on the same day. You know, you would think, okay, our, our family's complete. I mean, we were so happy, so happy to have that second chance. I just always had this feeling, you know, there's another child out there. I just remember in the kitchen saying, um, you know, like, just curious, you know, how do you, how, how would you feel about adopting? Of course, I would love that, because I, I was adopted, so I would love to pay that forward. But we got this call. They said, we have this child um, in Korea, and you match this ideal profile of what the birth mother, you know, would love to have for a child. You're the only couple in our entire profile, but this little boy, his father was from Nigeria, and the mother was Korean, so half Asian, half black. The first time that we ever laid eyes on you, we were in Seoul, Korea, and we were at the adoption, um, the adoption agency. In one hand was this blue bag, and the other hand was Shane, was you. <laughs> it was joy. So you were only eight months old, and um, already getting emotional. It's okay. <laughs> I'm really glad they told me I was adopted, like, as soon as they could, because if I found it like the way my dad did, I don't know how it would be right now. I do want to know who my biological parents are, but if I don't find out, I would be fine. I was very lucky in being able to be adopted into a family like, like this. For years, Ricky Waters had never revealed his true feelings about his own family history. After having children, he let his guard down. I just remember saying, you know, have you ever thought about maybe looking into your birth parents? You know, it, it would be a natural thing to do, and you were against it in the beginning. I actually felt afraid. I'm, I'm successful, I'm doing well now, I have a good family. Do I want something that might let me down again? I brought it up again, um, just because I'm like, you know, I, I just, I was just kind of guessing, going to instinct, something was still bothering him. She made me kind of talk about it. It was kind of the first time I kind of really talked about it with her, what I really like to know, and I started crying. That definitely was the point that that's I said, I, that's when we both you know, knew. whether we find a private investigator or not, whoever, you know, whatever, I just knew myself that I had to find his mother for him. So, <laughs> less than 24 hours away. Mm -hmm. What's your over, overriding feeling about this? Almost being in a state of, non-belief that this is actually really happening. You know, going through my whole life and everything I did, being affected by this one situation or this one moment, can, or that can all be liberated and, you know, and kind of handled almost, you know, in one moment. Who are we gonna pick up at the airport? Um, Krista's mom. You mean Dad's daddy's mom? mom? Krista. Dad's <laughs> mommy and daddy's brother, Jason. <laughs> Meeting her was a good thing. 
I look just like her, <laughs> you know? I mean, you can see where the resemblance is. And meeting my brothers and saying I look just like them. Now, when I look back on it, it's so clear to me. The whole time it was bothering me, you know, that my actions, everything, having, wanting to be the best, and not only just wanting to be the best, having to be the best, having to be the center of attention. I want my mom and the people I came from to say, you done well. We didn't give you away because we didn't care about you. We think you're beautiful. We think you're great. We've met more than that and spent some time, but it got, it got messy. That's your grandma. Wow. That's what didn't have a a real relationship with her or anything, but it's all fine. I'm glad that I met my mom. I already had my closure that I needed. <laughs>